domain for each of these in yellow and pink. Right, and the domain for the yellow is? Lisbeth, the domain for the yellow is? Yes. Raise your hand if you got that. You should have just had a basic graph on your in your head. Well, that's quadratic. And domain means which direction? Left to right. Left to right. So it's touching an arrow, touching arrow. Anytime there's two arrows, the answer is? Is? Infinity. Negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. Now, if you graph this one, what does your graph look like? Curve from where? From negative 1, right? Like this? Does that make sense? Okay. You guys are very visual, but we've already done this algebraically. You take your radicand, the number inside there, and you are setting it equal to not equal to 0, greater than 0, or greater than or equal to 0. Greater than or equal to 0. If you subtract 1, you would have gone x is greater than negative 1. If you did a quick uh, number line at negative 1, it is bigger. Yes? So an in integral notation, your domain would be um, bracket negative 1, comma, infinity. Raise your hand if you got that. All right. Those are going to come back into play later on, okay? So, that was our review of what we've been learning. Hopefully the puzzle pieces are coming together. Now, in our uh, composite functions, we are to add them. Well, if I add them, all I have to do is a substitution. f of x is equal to x squared. Make sure your substitutions are in parentheses. Our g is the radical of x plus 1. Because you're adding, you don't need the parentheses anymore. Here I have a radical, and this one's not in the radical. Um, they're not the same, so you can't add them. So your answer is x squared plus the square root of x plus 1. Zoom in there for you. Now, let's think about our domain. This is the parent who doesn't really... They're really not a parent, right? You call them a parent, but... They're like your brother or sister. They don't really take care of you. They can let you do whatever you want. There are no restrictions. Ah, you can come home at 3 o'clock in the morning. Here, my wallet's on top of the uh, kitchen table. Take whatever you want. This one says there's restriction. You come home, you do your homework, and you're not eating dinner nor smartphone until you're done. Right? So this one's the most restrictive domain. You can write that. MRD. Class, what does that stand for? We started talking about that yesterday. So when I'm picking these, I have to pick the one that's most restrictive. That's this one. So you can write with domain of negative 1 to infinity. Okay? And that's my answer. So we're just applying the math operations and applying the domain. Let's try this one down here. F minus G. F is X squared. And then we're subtracting. So parentheses, and then g is square root of x plus 1. Now, you're not going to do anything crazy like trying to subtract this x from inside. They're just, they're not the same. So they're not like terms. So it's basically the same. x squared minus square root of x plus 1 is our answer. And what is the most restrictive domain? Which one, class? Which one has a stricter parent? Bracket, negative 1, 2, infinity. And that's our answer. All right, let's do the one that has g times g. g is the radical uh, x plus 1 and times radical x plus 1. Question. They're in parentheses, yes? 
How many do you have of these? There are two of them. Let's write them together. Let's see if we can simplify it. So if we did a simple problem like this, if I said uh, the square root of 9 squared. Klaus, what's the square root of 9? And what's 3 squared? 9. It's just the number inside. They kind of cancel. Do you see that? So in this problem, what's our answer? It's just x plus 1. Actually, this problem, we can't do that. So we'll just keep it as this one. Can't cancel there. That's the answer. Um, what's our most restrictive domain? It's the same thing as above. I'll tell you the, the, the restricting domain only changes when we get to the fraction one. Okay? Only when we get to the fraction one. Okay, so f is just x squared times the square root of uh, x plus 1. Don't think you could do something crazy like distribute inside the radical sign. Um, it's not possible, so this is actually just your answer. x squared square root of x plus 1 with a domain of what? Raise your hand if you got that. All right, this is the tricky one. Ready? F divided by G is X squared over square root of X plus 1. But here, you should be thinking about a rational function. A rational function basically says we do not want this uh, equal to 0, correct? Okay, then you have to think about which problems do I not want to be uh, equal to zero. So in this problem, pay attention, I'm going to set that equal to what? Your choices are not equal to zero, greater than zero, or greater than or equal to zero. Five seconds, talk to your partner. Okay, raise your hand if you said not equal to zero. Greater than zero. Greater than or equal to zero. Okay, look. Now, I know we did this problem above and we said greater, uh, greater than or equal to zero. But that means that it's okay if this is equal to zero underneath the radical. Yes? Do I really want this uh, equal to zero? Because what's the square root of zero? And anything divided by zero is? Yeah. Bad. Undefined. Does that make sense? So here you're going to make it greater than zero. Subtract one, you'll get x is greater than negative one. On a number line, it looks like this. Sorry, that should be an open circle. And so your answer is this with a domain, pay attention, parentheses negative 1 to infinity. The reason why this problem is a parentheses and not a bracket, just think about it. If you picked negative 1, class, what's negative 1 plus 1? Square root of 0 is 0 undefined bad, right? That's why we're not including negative 1. Hello, man. You don't love man? What's wrong with you?